the Icons of Real Estate podcast. Are you ready to learn the proven money-making secrets from top producing icon agents? Ready to skyrocket your business? This podcast is for you. Tune in every week and find out how to implement proven strategies to 10 times your business. From $3 million to $30 million in just 12 months. Brought to you by the Masters in Real Estate Marketing, Arter SEO. Welcome to the Icons of Real Estate. I'm Tim Calloway. We have a very special guest from North Carolina, Matthew Hanks with EXP Realty and the Hanks Realty Group. How are you, Matthew? Wonderful. I really appreciate you having me on the show. Yeah, thanks for being here, man. I know you're busy, but, uh, you know, love having uh, EXP Realtors on. So I'm going to start where I always start. And if anybody's ever watched or listened to this show before, they know this is always the first question. Were you, uh, you know, were you five years old tugging at your parents' uh, pant leg saying, hey, mom, dad, how do I become a realtor? Or are you like most of us where we kind of fell into it later on in life? You know, the interesting thing was, I, I certainly don't remember tugging on the pants leg saying I want to be a real estate agent. But um, interesting thing I learned was that my grandfather had been into real estate for just a short time. Uh, I don't know the specifics, but he was, uh, he led a camp. He was a pastor. I know he sold vacuum cleaners for a while. And then it came out that he was a real estate agent. So thought that was pretty interesting that that was my my father's father. Right. My, my grandfather had been in real estate, so. It was in your blood and you didn't know it. Uh, that that I would say is true, yes. <laughs> so how did you get into real estate? Was there a previous career and then you, you moved into it or how did how did that work? Yeah, well, the tugging at the pants leg, what I want to do for me, that was aviation and being a pilot. I was always fascinated with anything in the skies that was flying around. So it was always a, a goal and a passion. Uh, that's a little bit of my story too, that I can fill in the blanks as we go here. You know, I, I had taken a career, I was in sales, and that particular position moved me across the country to Colorado. And the whole time I was in Colorado, I was thinking about uh, North Carolina and what it was like to be back in North Carolina. So real estate was the opportunity for me that uh, somewhat of a low barrier of entry. I knew if I took the class, passed the class, there was just one test that I had to pass and I could be licensed. And then I knew it would give me the opportunity that the harder I worked, the more successful that I could be. And it, it was just that, an opportunity. You know, right. I was there to get my license. And I thought uh, if I'm going to make a commission off of selling something, houses seem like a really big something that I can make a big commission. So right. uh, re real estate it was for me. Right. And everybody needs one. Yeah. Uh, you know, American dream, home ownership. Sure. That's why when it comes to lead generation and finding business, you know, that's part of the beauty of real estate is it's it's not some far out product that it's it's hard to find somebody that's interested. You know, literally everybody you talk to needs a place to live. Right. Just getting so. your name out there and, and, and being seen. And 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 I, and I think, you know, and I'm sure you'll agree, but educating the public. I know you do that in your on your website. You know, that's a big part of it. Educating the public on expectations and what's going on and what's out there. Right. Well, yeah, because I mean, I think as real estate agents, we just live this day in, day out. And some of the stuff is second nature to us when it comes to prepping a home for the market or what expectations we have. And we take it for granted that uh, some of the things that we know that we've learned, <clears throat> you know, for me, I'm in my 20th year. Uh, that story I just told happened back in 2002 and I got licensed 2003. And so it's been a long journey. And so a lot of it is we do this every day and our clients don't. So what can we do to help them to uh, feel comfortable with the process and know what their options are and feel like they're making good, wise, informed decisions? And right. I think that's as, as much anything as the bulk of what we do. Nice. Nice, for sure. Well, you know, we talked about how you got started, you know, obviously. And then, uh, well, tell me about today. I mean, what is your what does your team look like uh, or is there a team? You're a solopreneur. Uh, what does that look like right now? And then how are, how are you if you do have a team? How are you building that team? Uh, my business has looked kind of different over the years. When I first started, it was just me, of course, and I was with a large regional firm here in North Carolina, and they had great training. I really uh, appreciate and enjoy the time that I had there at that company, and it gave me a really good foundation to yeah. build from. And 
So when I was ready to branch out on my own, you know, that's when the recession hit. That was 2008. And so not a good time to branch <laughs> Uh, to, to branch out and try something new. Well, maybe we, we kind of all needed to do something different uh, at that time. But, you know, my patience level, my bank account, uh, all those things told me I need to do something different because houses just weren't selling the way they did from 2003 to 2006. And so for me, the answer was I joined the military. I answered an ad for the National Guard. I joined wow. the military. I was in the military for eight years. Uh, ended up going to officer candidacy school. I ended up going to flight school, flew helicopters. So that was kind of when I said what my goal was as a young right. person. Right. Uh, Bringing so that, that dream back around, right? Full circle. Yeah. yeah. The, so the recession and the, and the military and the National Guard here in North Carolina gave me that opportunity. But then coming out of that, you know, as far as to your question, what does the business look like? I was offered a position to run the Coldwell Banker office in our area. So I ran that office and I built a team. And then in 2017, I believe it was, 2018, my team had grown and I moved my team to, we had our own office. We moved to EXP. And so the team grew. And at one point, I think we were up to 21 or 22 people on the team. So we you know, grew a large team and did quite a number of transactions. And then the business uh, that the team kind of uh, took on a different form and we scaled back. Um, one of the things that I missed was, as I was in that team leader position, I was more removed from helping buyers and sellers directly because I was spending a lot of time supporting the agents that were on my team. I wanted them to be successful, of course, but that was something I really missed. So I kind of gravitated back towards now. I'm, I'm essentially the sales piece of Hank's Realty Group to where I'm helping buyers and sellers directly. And then the other members uh, are more support in support roles. So I have a full-time transaction coordinator, have a virtual assistant, have a business manager. We have a field coordinator that goes out and we call him our gopher, goes out and puts our signs out and lock boxes, that type of thing. So that's kind of how we're structured today. I have one other licensed person that, that does some part-time selling, but ultimately the bulk of the sales piece falls onto me. Nice, nice. So, you know, now we know how you got into the business. I love that story arc coming back around because in reality, Matthew, I would say most people that I know, and I'm much older than you, and uh, not that I know more people, but most people I know never get that opportunity. So I think that's pretty awesome, man. I think that's pretty awesome to have that opportunity to live that dream. And, and even if it was just the eight years, do you fly now at all? The the flying I do today is I'm, I'm trying to get my private pilot's license on the civilian side. You know, I flew okay. in the military for years, and so... Uh, you know, now I'd like the ability to go have a plane or rent a plane and be able to travel a little bit with my family. Yeah. So that's that's the next goal when it comes to aviation. So I'm working yeah. on that right now. That's fantastic. That uh, uh, more power to you for that for sure. So I've always got to have something big that's hanging out there, something I'm right. trying to achieve and working towards. Kind like of how your, I'm wired. It's like your carrot, right? It's like a carrot. I always got to have something out there. Always chasing that carrot. It's it, but it, that's a good carrot. I mean, I. Yeah, I, I, I do a lot. I've done 300 podcasts this year, and I can tell you, I heard a lot of Lamborghini carrots, and I've heard a lot of, you know, uh, $10 million mansion carrots, and oh, I, I could tell you the carrots, but see, I like carrots like that because that's more about internal, I think, yeah. than, it, than it is, you know, yeah, you want to fly and go other places, but it's more like a, Oh, it's like you're getting a degree or anything else, you know, it's, it's, it's more like the, 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 what is it, the, the journey is part of it, right? I mean, that that's a big part of it. It's not about just money. I guess that's what I'm saying. It's not about money. Yeah, because the, the money comes and goes. I mean, right. at, at some point, you know, you you achieve success in this business and the money's going to be there. But, you know, it kind of passes away pretty quickly, I found, in terms of that carrot. You know, it's like once you... Once you have a house, once you have a car, and, you know, what are you going to buy? Another house, another right. car, and so... It's that it's those types of things because to me the aviation everything it means to me over the years and then it opens up opportunities for experiences because I could take clients out I could take trips with the family I could, you know that that's that's one of those things that um, would truly be next level type of thing so there's definitely a plane and a helicopter on the vision board for me that is awesome I, I I have been on in see now we got a little off that's okay because people love these stories man I'm gonna tell you Matthew. I've been on a helicopter twice in my life um, and I was not in the military, but thank you for your service in the military. 
but my my stepdad was my son. I have a son that just believe it or not has always given away my age. Just retired from the military, but it was mm. medical retirement after uh, a decade. But so I've had the opportunity to be in a helicopter two times. That's pretty exhilarating stuff, man. Uh, you know, being in a plane is cool, and I've been in you know personal planes, single engine type stuff as well. But that helicopter ride is is a different different animal. Yeah, it's kind of the ultimate feeling of freedom to be out there, but uh, especially in a helicopter, because, you know, you could pick up and land the thing anywhere you want. Um, right, right. They have permissions exactly. to do so. You don't just land in people's backyards, but, you know, yeah, it has that feeling of, gosh, I could, I could go anywhere. I could do anything. Right. So tell me about the, what's the future look like for you? What's the, you know, what's the one, three, five year plan? And, uh, you know, don't hold back. I mean, if it's, if it's a fleet of your own, uh, airline, Hey, it's a fleet of your own airline, but what, what's the future look like for, uh, for Matthew and his, his, the Hanks Realty Group? Well, it's an interesting question. I mean, I, I don't, uh, maybe I should, I don't necessarily approach it of this is exactly where I want to be in three years, five years. Yeah. I can tell you the one year, you know, where my focus is, I have three children that are, my oldest is just turned 13. My middle child is my daughter, Anna. She's 10. And then my youngest is Jonah. He's eight. And I'm I'm enjoying right now, uh, you know, the market has has slowed a bit from where we've been the past two years. And uh, let's say we've been in 10th gear over the past two years. And if things do slow over the, over this year or the next couple of years, you know, for me, where I'm at in life and being there for them, that's not necessarily a bad thing. There you me. go. So I'm I'm kind of focused right now, not on hey we did 75 transactions last year I want to do 100 this year, I'm not really thinking in terms of that right now. So my head right now is, you know I've, I'm in my 20th year of real estate. How can I take this business that we built and use that to be able to invest my time and energy into you know this window of opportunity I have with my kids because they'll flee the nest before too long and I can. If I want to build it to 150 transactions a year, then I can do it then. Don't so get that's me kind started. Of where my head's at right now. Yeah, don't get me started, Matthew. You, I'll, I'll put you on my other podcast, as Dads with Kids. Uh, I've, yeah, I've, I've got four sons, all adults, and I'll tell you, enjoy. And I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. You're well grounded enough to know this, but uh, yeah, definitely absorb the time now. And man, I always say a, a, a slowdown in the business or on my business or businesses is probably one of the best things that ever happened mm -hmm. because you really, I hate to use the term stop and smell the roses, but that's kind of what it is. You know, you, you get to kind of live in the moment and not in someone else's moment, which, mm -hmm. which tends to be in sales or in, in real estate, someone else's mm -hmm. moment, you're making their dreams come true, right? You're, you're facilitating that. But sometimes when you can slow down, I think and sit back and enjoy your own, you know, dream. And I'm going to tell you, your dream with your kids and your family, you and I both know 10 times more important than any dream you can lay out there, you know, but, uh, but congratulations on that. That's fantastic. And uh, definitely enjoy the time. But then one day you'll be where I'm at and you get to enjoy the grandkids. So it's all the fun and a little bit less responsibility, you know, so it's yeah, kind of fun for sure. So I, I can't wait. Uh, yeah. You know, I'm just, the, the, there's a window of opportunity and, and you talk to guys that have been down the road, you know, uh, let's say the grandfathers of the world and talk to them and they say, man, if I could just, I worked so hard during those years, my kids were in school and yeah, I felt like I had to do what I did to provide them a living, but you know, I wasn't there a whole lot. And so I'm like, and I've heard that so much and I, it's starting to resonate with me too as a dad. And I thought, you know what? I am in those years. I do make a really good living from having done this for now 20 years. Yeah, it's going to be okay if some other brokers in the area sell a few of the houses out there. I've sold a whole bunch over my career. Uh, let me just take and enjoy some of the time that I have with them. I mean, twice in the past week, you know, I dropped my kids off at school every morning. And not only have I dropped them off, I picked them up. Yeah. Like, man, that, that, where I'm at right now, that feels like a win. That is a win. That is a win. Matthew, I'll tell you, just to dovetail off that real quick, and one of the advantages, and you're sitting in that advantage, and is that, you know, talking to the the the, the older of the of the world, and, you know, kind of how we raise kids, did things, you know, um, 
the, one of the big benefits is where you're sitting right now wasn't available 20 years ago, 25 years ago. You know, you know, you, you could say, well, EXP in, in 2002, but the reality is where EXP is now and offers folks like yourself wasn't around back then. And that's the beauty of it. You probably never will have to say, you know, oh, I, I wish I would, could have been there more, but I was out earning a living because you're kind of living in your living. Does that make sense? Like, you know, you get to work from wherever you want and all the tools are just on a little computer and, you know, and you just got to get out there and, and and do your thing. It wasn't available back then. And so it's it's really a beautiful thing. I don't think you'll ever have those kind of regrets, no matter what the situation, just for the fact of being with a company like eXp. I think that's awesome for sure. So tell me, you know, if I could solve a problem for you, if you, you know, you, you have, seems like quite a good toehold and grounding in your family and your life and your business all interacting together. Is there anything on a day to day that you wish were a little different? Like, are there any, and I never say problems. There's no such thing as a real problem. There's just, there's instances and there's solutions to instances, but anything that you come up with on a regular basis that you would need solved, there's always Man, the it, one in it. And it's always the same. I hear it every time more time, Tim. I just wish I had more time or I yeah. can duplicate myself. I always hear that. I don't know if that yeah. works for you or. Yeah. Um, well, I don't know. You're picking your kids up from school and dropping them off. I don't think <laughs> yeah. that's a problem. Well, see, the, the thing is, over the years, one of the things I've done so many things wrong over the years. Uh, one of the things I feel like I've maybe done right is the idea of leveraging time. So it was a big step for me to hire someone full-time with salary and bonus and all to assist me in the business. That was a big step. And it's a commitment and you have to be confident that you're going to be able to perform in the market to bring the, the dollars in to, in order to support that other person. And so that, that was a big deal. So one of the challenges of all of the details that have to be managed from contract to close having someone that is focused in that area and managing that part of the process for me. Right. Uh, I always hated the idea. I, I'm wired for the uh, go out and kill the prey and drag it back to the cave. You know, I like the thrill of the kill, yeah. putting things under contract. And right. then I would always drop the ball after we're under contract. There's always something I forget, paperwork missing, appointments that should have been scheduled and didn't because my mind is on where's the next sale. So that was a big deal for me. When you talk about time, you know, getting your time back is with adding more people to assist you, adding more people to the team. Because if you make a big list of all the things you do, it's taking up all your time. You say, I want my time back, but these things still need to be done. So the things that still have to be done that you don't want to do so you can get your time back, you got to either outsource it, you got to hire somebody else to do it. But then the problem is your staff costs to go up, your payroll costs go up. Right. And so then it's, the feeling, the the weight of payroll is coming and I'm making a lot of money, but why am I doing all this work? Money's coming in, it's going right back out in payroll. Right. So there's the balance. And I'm sure other people have maybe been down further down that road and have mastered it more than I have, but, you know, finding the right people to join me on the journey when the, the task at hand or the dream is bigger than what I can accomplish on my own, finding the right people I have found to be, more than anything, the most important thing. It could be a challenge when, for sure. Yeah. When, when you first start out, you know, you're just looking for that one client. I just want to sell one house. And then you right. put a house under contract and say, now, hey, I figured that part out. Let me do another one. Right. And then you get into, you know, I think I'm going to try to do 10 next year. And then it grows to now we're talking, can we do 100 this year? So, right. Well, let me ask you this. We, we we haven't gotten a chance yet and we're kind of winding down. So we'll make this kind of the last topic. And I know you know this one backwards and forwards. Tell me about the area that you work. You, you know, you were talking about being uh, a little outside Charleston in the Gastonia area. Uh, tell me, tell me about the area that you work in, work and live in. Well, our area here, Gaston, North Carolina, uh, not Charleston, Charlotte. Oh, Charlotte. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Charleston's about four hours away. Uh, uh, not even close. So yeah. Charlotte, <laughs> North Carolina. Um, it's interesting that there was a report that just came out this week where Zillow is forecasting, and I have a love hate relationship with Zillow. Don't but they're know. forecasting that Charlotte, North Carolina, be the number one market, hottest market in 2023. Wow. Number one market. Um, so you can see that on their social media and it was all over LinkedIn. 
So, you know, what we have going in Charlotte is it, it, it feels like every reason in the world that people would want to live here. We have international airport, we have moderate climate, we have four seasons, we have professional sports, great health care. Um, we're second in banking only to New York City. Right. Um, we're midway between D.C. and Atlanta. You can be in the mountains in two hours, gorgeous Appalachian Mountains. You could be at the beach in three and a half hours or so. So it's a wonderful community to be a part of. And where we are in Gaston, we are just to the west of Charlotte. And, you know, we, we don't have the traffic here. And, we're, you know, you're not caught up in the big city life. So we're just a suburb of Charlotte. So that's part of what's going on in our community. Nice. I mean, it looks like a very nice community. I have to be brutally honest. I wasn't, you know, familiar with that area. Um, but I'll tell you this. As I said earlier, I've done about 300 um, 300 podcasts over this year and you wouldn't believe how many times the Carolinas just overall you know whether it's north and south come up now I'm in West Palm Beach Florida so nice there was yeah there was a time when all I heard about was Florida right and I'm like I know I know I'm in Florida I get it 300,000 people you know positive influx uh you know every year yeah it's ridiculous home prices the double-edged sword of that, which is awesome for you, Matthew, is, yeah, a lot of folks want to move to the area. It is a beautiful area. And then one day you turn around and home prices are too darn high. Yeah. <laughs> and you go, wait we're, a minute. And, and we're not too far off of that. You know, yeah. we there was so much demand in our area, like a lot of areas, I'm sure, where high demand, low inventory, right. and historically low interest rates just push the prices to – We've never seen them before, historic highs. So definitely have the affordability challenge in our market. Yeah, for sure. Well, Matthew, how would someone get in touch with you, whether they wanted to list, whether they wanted to buy, or maybe they want to just come work for you? Good question. Uh, so I have my URL there on my name on the screen there, MatthewHanks.com. So if you right. log on to MatthewHanks.com, it goes to all my links for all my social media, the website, Facebook. You can schedule a meeting with me. Um those types of things. Okay. And Hank's Realty Group is there too. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, the last thing I always like to do with my guest, Matthew, is I always say, you're the hit record. I'm just the DJ spinning the record, right? And, you know, whatever is on your, your mind, your heart, your soul, you feel like you need to share with the audience, you know, the last minute or two here, uh, it's an open floor for you to share it and take us out. Well, I, I think we're in an honored profession. Uh, those who choose real estate as their profession because, you know, 20 years, a lot of opportunities have come up for me over those 20 years, but I've just hung right in there with real estate. And uh, a lot of people say that they're in real estate because of houses. They just love houses. I had somebody yesterday tell me their thing about real estate because they love houses. And I said, well, I hate to break it to you, but from my perspective, what we do is very, very little about real estate it's right. a, or, or about houses. Um, what we, we are in the people business. So you really have to love people, care about people. And when things get messy and you see all different sides of people, because there's a lot of money at play and a lot of emotions at play and family situations at, in play. Right. If you, if you love people and you, and you, that's something that drives you and you want to be rewarded, uh, handsomely for the effort you put in, just don't, uh, you need to have a thick skin to get into what we do with real estate, but sure. um, the overarching thing that I'm trying to get across there is just gratitude for those that happen to be in the real estate field, because it, it's amazing that we can be compensated at the level that we are for assisting people in such a major time in their lives to transition to home ownership. So uh, I, I feel that every day, you know, I'm yeah. really, really thankful for the journey that has allowed me to provide for my family and all my needs and a lot of my wants as well. well that's fantastic, Matthew. Matthew Hanks, MatthewHanks.com, EXP Realty, Charlotte, North Carolina. <laughs> uh, Charleston's great, but that's a long way from where I am. That's a long ways <laughs> off, and Tim, Tim needs to know his geography. Uh, <laughs> thanks so much for being on the program. I've really enjoyed it. I, I look forward to catching up with you the next three, six, nine months, see how things are going, check those home prices after now that it seems like everybody wants to move there for sure. But uh, have a great week. Be safe. Thank you, Tim. Appreciate you having me on.